Gray Snake was the fanatical leader of a small band of Arapaho. The daring guerrilla tactics had been causing plenty of trouble, and three officers had been killed under rather strange circumstances. My old friend Colonel Middleton wanted an undercover investigation. That's why George and I were here, decked out as soldiers. Reckon you must be Captain Smith. Go right in, the old man's expecting you. What's your name, Sergeant? Stringer. Sir. Sergeant Stringer, the next time we meet, I'll expect a salute from you. And I'll expect you to remember how to address an officer. Any questions? Looks like another one of them fit and polish boys, Kurt. Yep. Another dandy target for that engine. All three men were shot in the forehead with an army revolver. And Gray Snake has one. Yes. That's pretty good shooting for an Indian, Colonel. From the back of a running horse at that. Too good. Oh, he might have got in a lucky shot. But he couldn't have killed all three men in the same way. No, much as I hate to think so, Tom, it has to be one of my own men. What do the men think? They seem to think it's Gray Snake, all right. He's becoming a legend with them. And that bred devil certainly believes he's responsible. He's been boasting that his medicine is stronger than ours and he'll wipe out all of our officers. Sounds like someone's making use of that. Yes. Someone who must have a grudge against officers. I'll see that whoever it is has reason to hate me, too. You'll have free hand in this, Tom. How do you want to proceed? First, I'd like to find out all I can about the officers who were killed. I have their files right here. Maybe you can find something I couldn't. This is Captain Carter's record. He was the first man killed. Lieutenant Andrews was a friend of the family, and I practically raised him. Mason was just a kid. Been out here about a month. That's a shame. Colonel, if it's all right with you, I'll take these over to my quarters and study them tonight. Yes, certainly. Well, Carrie will be sorry she wasn't here to greet you. She's out riding. Should be back soon. Out breaking some poor soldier's heart, I'll bet. Hmm. Yeah, she hasn't changed much. Oh, I warned her not to give you away. Good. Colonel, it'll be a pleasure serving under you, sir. Captain Smith, Corporal Forsythe. Corporal Forsythe, show the captain to his quarters. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. You want to go riding the same time tomorrow? No, I don't think so. Welcome to the fort, Captain. I'm Colonel Middleton's daughter, Carrie. My pleasure, Miss Middleton. Father and I'd be pleased if you'd join us for supper tonight. Your servant, ma'am. Corporal. I'm sorry, sir. Smitty, we gotta go for all this business. You need to practice. I'll never get the hang of it. Boy, it sure look neat in this get-up, Smith. Wish I could have been an officer. You don't mind your manners. I might just break you to Buck Friday. Well, you wouldn't talk like that if you know where I've been this afternoon. No? Well, I've been doing some nosing around. Little detective man Moan. Come up with some hot suspects for you. Well, that's good work, George. What? Well, Smitty, you find this hard to believe. But you know just about every soldier on this fort's got a bone to pick with officers? You're a big help, George. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Beautiful night, isn't it, Tom? Look at that moon. You know, Carrie, this army life's not too bad. It has its moments. I don't recognize that voice. 
Oh, that, that's my orderly. It's wonderful having you here, Tom. Seems like old times. Does bring back a few pleasant memories, doesn't it? Yes. What? What's your name, soldier? Private Owen, sir. Roger, what are you doing here? Well, I... Nothing. Why were you hiding? Well, I... Thought I heard something in the stable, sir. You certainly took a roundabout course getting there. All right, on your way, soldier. Yes, sir. Carrie, I think that young man's stuck on you. Maybe a little. Poor fellow seems so lonesome all the time. I try to be nice to him. You know, I bet every man in this fort is secretly in love with you. I don't have much competition. Boys well, are lucky to have you around. I don't know, Tom. It seems I've been bad luck for the men I've really cared about. What do you mean? Captain Carter and I had just announced our engagement when he was killed. I'm sorry. I was lonesome and unhappy. Bob Andrews came here shortly after. He and I had practically grown up together. Good to have someone to confide in. I was just getting to be myself again and... After that, I didn't want to make friends with anyone for a long time. Then young Lieutenant Mason came here. We were just starting to become friends when... Oh, Tom, do be careful. I intend to. Captain O'Neill, you showed up here with it. You know, it's bad enough to have to serve in this stinking place without having to put up with officers like him, shoving his weight around. Gentlemen, <laughs> by act of Congress. That kind don't last long around here. Now, <laughs> don't blame me for bringing him out here. He brought me. You ain't much better. What did you mean by that? Take it any way you like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man, break it up. How about another song? Oh, I say, Corporal, when you get your nerve built up enough, remember, I got first crack at you. You know, I'm going to blast you. Right now, though, let's do Army on. Pep up this ripen outfit. Three years ago this very day, I went to Governor's Isle to stand for an instant cannon into military style. Our 13 American dollars each month we surely get to carry a gun and bayonet with a military step. Yo, there's Sergeant John McCafferty and Corporal Donahue. They make us march up to the crack in Gallon Company Q. The drums they roll upon me so for that's the way we go. Home. Forty miles a day on beans and hay in a regular army oh. The best of all the officers is Second Lieutenant McDuff. Of smoking and of sleeping, he never got enough. Said the captain, all we want of you is to go to Reveille. And we'll let the first sergeant stay and run the company. Yo, there's Sergeant John McCafferty and Corporal Donahue. They make us march up to the crack and gallon company too. The drums they roll upon me soul, for that's the way we go home. Forty miles a day on beans and hay in a regular army oh. Yeah! Hey, hey, hey! I thought tap sounded over an hour ago. I'm going to establish a little discipline in this outfit. What's wrong with your hat, O'Neill? Is it glued on? Kind of an example you're setting for these men, Sergeant. A good example for a real soldier. Sir. If you're looking for trouble, Sergeant, I'll see that you get plenty of it. Well, why not now? Just a minute, Sergeant. Let's be fair about this. You promised me the first dance, remember? <laughs> All 
right, that's enough, both of you. Well, you men seem to have a lot of excess energy. That's fine. I think I know just the way to help you get rid of it. I want every one of you on that parade ground at daybreak. And you two will get a little special attention. Now, lights out. Sergeant Stringer, you two still look fresh. I think you better take a few more turns around. Come on, on the double. Close it up, Romack. Carrying things a little too far. Had to make it look real, George. Besides, you can spare the town. But I'm plumb played out. That'll be all, Corporal. On the double. Close it up. On guard! Detailed. Hit. Hut! All right, let's liven it up a little bit. On guard! Detailed. Hit. Hut! At ease. You men handle these sabers like a bunch of pitchforks. Tom said he'd give all the men good reason to hate him. He's off to a good start. I hope he doesn't carry it too far. Corporal Forsythe. Ten. Hup. Two paces forward. Hup. You seem to know what you're doing with that. On guard. Come on, soldier. You can do better than that. Graduated from Virginia Military Institute, and his name isn't Forsythe. Well, how'd you figure that out? Only a Confederate officer would have handled a saber like he did, and VMI taught most of it. Now, what's the use of me missing my lunch if you already know all about him? I don't know his real name, George. Huh. Well, it's Lieutenant Wayne F. Charlton. Charlton, huh? Well, I'm not too surprised. A lot of Southern officers came out to the frontier to join the Army after the war. Wasn't there a Charlton Bill burned to the ground during Sherman's March? 
Yes, as a matter of fact, there was. According to these records, Carter served with Sherman. That's right. Should we call Forsythe in for questioning? Well, not yet, Colonel. Don't tip her hand. There's nothing definite here to link him to the murders of Andrews and Mason. Captain Carter seems to have made a lot of enemies. Yes. Carter was a good officer, but too much of a disciplinarian. I uh, noticed you had to warn him about flogging. And some of the men he had whipped are still here. Owens and O'Neill, for instance. I left Carter in charge once when I had to go back east. The men were ready to mutiny when I returned. That's when I called him up about the whippings. Soldiers won't take too much of that. He had a run in with Stringer, too, didn't he? <laughs> that sergeant's always been in trouble with the officers. He resents all West Point men. Thinks he's a much better soldier than any of them. It's about half right, too. Well, there are three or four men here who could be guilty. I think we'd better call them a little closer before we come out in the open. I hope everything goes well, Tom. Good luck. Thanks, Carrie. I'll see you this evening, huh? George and I hadn't been able to uncover anything new, and Chief Richards had only loaned us to the Army for a week. So I decided we'd have to bring things to a head. Forward! Ho! Riding down in the gullies, out of sight. Every engine in the country will spot us up here. I want any advice from you, Stringer. I'll ask for it.
done a good job, Tom. I know it wasn't easy to keep your eyes on the Indians when you knew that one of your own men had a pistol pointed at the back of your head. Well, at least when I turned around, I had a pretty good idea where to look. George was keeping his eyes on Forsyth, and I'd kept track of Owens. And Sergeant Stringer? Once I heard him pop off, I didn't suspect him any longer. You see, unlike Owens, he had a safety valve. Wonder what made Owens do it. I think I know now. I didn't realize before, but he was jealous of me. Why, he even tried to discourage my engagement to Captain Carter. I didn't pay any attention to him at the time, just thought he was a silly kid. That's not your fault, Carrie. Owens was jealous of Carter, but he never would have killed him if it hadn't been for the whippings. When his scheme worked so well, he decided to use it again. Well, it's all over now. Guess maybe I earned an extra stripe, hmm? Sir? Oh, heck, Smitty. You know, George, I think you'd make an excellent civilian. <laughs> now, I wonder if I might prevail upon you two to accept one more serious assignment for me. Of course, Colonel. I think it'll do Carrie good to go back east for a while. Would you and George mind escorting her to the stagecoach line in Denver? <laughs> Colonel, that's the nicest assignment we've ever had. <laughs> Dinner? <laughs> Corporal George Romack was eager to get his discharge from the Army. But I must admit, for some reason or other, I wasn't in any rush at all to get back to civilian life. Thank you.